Okay, Alexander, let's talk about what's going on with Biden in Ukraine. We have this uh, post, this news via Interfax, which says Ukrainian detectives have opened a case into possible pressure put on former prosecutor General Shokin by Biden. We also have uh, an article on RT which says Biden treated Ukraine as his private property, says purged prosecutor Shokin on Burisma scandal via a Ukraine gate documentary. This documentary was by a French investigative journalist, Olivier Bourrier. Alexander, what's going on here? Because after the, uh, the impeachment trial went bust for the Democrats, Ukraine has kind of disappeared from the news. We're back. Actually, we're back on Russia again. So we're, we're, we've moved away from Ukraine. We're back on Russia is, is trying to meddle in the elections. But let's revisit Biden, Burisma, yeah. Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, and it, it. yeah, indeed. It's amazing, actually. I mean, here we were a few you know, weeks ago, not so very long ago. We were all talking all the time about, you know, what Biden had been up to, what Joe Biden had been up to in Ukraine, what Hunter Biden up was up to with Burisma, all of these, all of these subjects, all of that, all that was going on, had been going on in Ukraine, had suddenly become topical. And it's as if somebody's just now pulled a switch and this whole debate and discussion since the uh, impeachment has basically stopped. But, you know, the um, story in the United States might, might have stopped. But the reality of what's going on in the ground, on the ground, has not. And in fact, what we're starting to see is all sorts of uh, moves now happening in Ukraine, which I think are extremely interesting and could eventually shed further light on this story. Now, the the documentary that you've mentioned, you can actually follow it. One place you can follow it on is Consortium News, where they've um, pu they've published all four episodes in this huge documentary about all the, the you know, the French, uh, the French documentary about what was going on in Ukraine. It's extremely interesting to me because it so completely corresponds with and vindicates our long-standing analysis that we have done on the Duran. And we've done that, by the way, without the advantage of actually going to Ukraine and meeting people there and talking to people, but actually based on what we both know about that country. And we both said there is extremely corrupt that you know corruption in ukraine is the organizing principle of society we've also said that joe biden's involvement and hunter biden's involvement gave all the appearance of a revolving door in which the united states had engineered the fall of a government in ukraine all kinds of people from the american political establishment flopped there like carpetbaggers or sent their sons there that they all got cushy jobs in various uh, Ukrainian companies, and that all the money that was pouring into Ukraine from outside, from the IMF, from the European Union, from the United States, $45 billion plus, was simply being siphoned off through these people into foreign bank accounts, some of which was ending up with various people in the United States. And this is what this documentary has basically been saying. And in the latest development in this is that Shokin, who people should remember, was the procurator general of U Ukraine, the attorney general of Ukraine, the man who Joe Biden got sacked and who Joe Biden bragged uh, 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 he sacked and who was at one point the star witness in the whole Ukraine uh, uh, affair and who the Republicans wanted to call as a witness in the impeachment proceedings, though the Democrats and Adam Schiff didn't want him to come. He's now again confirmed all the things we were saying. He was saying that Hunter Biden was given this job at Burisma where he didn't do anything, basically in order to buy protection from his father, that, you know, it was a scene essentially, and this is Shokin's words, as a bribe paid by Burisma via Hunter Biden directly to Joe Biden in order to get Joe Biden's 
protection. And that uh, the reason that was happening was that with the change of government in Ukraine following the Maidan coup, the uh, Burisma, which had been associated with the previous government, felt itself under pressure and was subjected to all sorts of investigations that were being organized by Shokin, perhaps at the instigation of the new president, the Maidan president, Petro Poroshenko. And uh, Shokin goes on to say that the, the Bidens, or to be precise, Joe Biden, engineered his removal in order to protect Burisma, which his son, Joe Biden's son, was a director of. So this attempt to buy protection worked. This is what Shokin is saying. And Shokin is not only saying it in this documentary, he has now been loudly complaining about it in Ukraine itself to the Ukrainian authorities. And the Ukrainian authorities have opened an investigation of Joe Biden on the grounds that Joe Biden's attempt to sack a Ukrainian official carrying out an investigation of a corrupt company was potentially criminal and illegal. That is what that Interfax report says. So this famous investigation of Joe Biden that Donald Trump was supposedly asking for, only he didn't actually ask for it, is now happening. But the person who's asking, asking for it, it was not, is not Donald Trump. It's shocking. The uh, former attorney general of Ukraine, who was, as he says, Joe Biden's victim. So, you know, the whole thing has now turned full circle. We're back to an investigation of Joe Biden by the Ukrainians. And amazingly, no one in the United States is reporting it or is at all interested in it. Yeah, it's a good point. They don't care anymore about it yeah. because it can't do any damage to Trump. So they don't care. Biden doesn't yeah. care because he's not going to face any uh, repercussions for what he did, nor will his son. But let me get back to the documentary, Alexander. It's the yeah. uh, that you were mentioning on mm. uh, Ukraine Gate. It's uh, the fourth installment of this documentary series, Ukraine Inconvenient Facts. Shokin reveals why and how he was ousted and what role the U.S. has played in Ukraine. And this is via RT, by the way. And it goes on. Shokin tells Bourdieu, that's Bourdieu, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, that is the documentary filmmaker, that Biden and the U.S. government had approved his appointment as prosecutor general as indeed they did all major appointments in Ukraine since the 2014 Maidan upheaval and worked with him well until he started getting too close to Burisma. He rejected reports that described his probe as dormant. Quote, Biden was acting on behalf of his own interests and those of his family and not in the interests of the American people. And quote, Shokin said, adding that Barack Obama's VP believed that Ukraine was his private property, his fiefdom, that he could do whatever he wanted here. And quote, within a few days of Shokin seizing the assets of Mykola Slochetsky, the oligarch owner of Burisma, President Petro Poroshenko summoned him and told him to back off. Quote, don't you understand what Biden wants from you? Why are you getting into this Burisma stuff again? Shokin quoted Poroshenko as saying, within a few weeks, he was replaced by someone Biden called more solid, Yuri Luchenko, who had no training in law and whom Shokin describes as a traitor to Ukraine. Alexander, it is no secret to us, and it is no surprise to us, and maybe to our viewers, that when Obama orchestrated the coup, the Maidan coup, the Maidan revolution, what was it called? The Revolution of Dignity, or they even branded it something. I, I, for, I forgot the name of how, how they marketed the Maidan revolution, the coup that Obama orchestrated. It was Joe Biden who was sitting in the parliament in Kiev. 
very much like Nancy Pelosi presides over the House. This is true. This is not yeah, type no, that's very really much true. Very that's much like really Nancy true. Pelosi presides over the House of Representatives. That was Joe Biden when he was visiting Kiev. He was presiding over the parliament. Mm -hmm. He was running government meetings. You had Natalie, Natalie Juresco, who was the finance minister, an American citizen who was the finance minister of mm -hmm. Ukraine. And of course, we found out recently that it was uh, Vidman, Lieutenant, mm -hmm. Lieutenant Colonel, Lieutenant mm -hmm. Colonel Vidman, who was offered also the post of defense minister. And I'm sure he would have taken it if it was not for some other circumstances that he probably had mm -hmm. uh, had in his way. But you had basically Biden and his crew running the country and stealing from the country. Yeah, I mean, let, let's let's hold on to a point that Shokin said. He said that Biden actually had to approve every single important ministerial position. So, you know, if you wanted a top job in Ukraine, you had to get Biden's agreement. And that is extraordinary. I mean, this whole Maidan coup is represented in the media in the West and indeed in the media in Ukraine as an assertion of Ukraine's independence from Russia. Now, Ukraine is independent from Russia since 1991, and the Russians have never chosen ministers in Ukraine. They've never actually had that kind of influence. The United States, after 2014, did. The United States was picking the ministers of Ukraine's government. The vice president of the United States, Joe Biden, was, as you absolutely rightly said, chairing cabinet meetings, Ukrainian cabinet meetings. The vice president of the United States, Joe Biden, as you absolutely rightly said, was presiding over meetings of the Ukrainian parliament. And the finance minister of the Ukraine, of Ukraine, was an American, an American citizen, Natalie Juresko. And of course, I suspect Lieutenant Colonel Vindman uh, was happy not to become defense minister of Ukraine because he was in a far more powerful position running Ukraine from Washington, where he was running things on behalf of Ukraine, as he would have said, and the National Security Council. So when Shokin says that Ukraine was a fiefdom, a fiefdom ru ruled by Joe Biden, He's right. That's exactly what Ukraine became. It was a fiefdom. And um, interestingly enough, within this fiefdom, no coincidence, what happens? The son of the man who is in overall charge, Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden, is appointed to a cushy directorship at Burisma Holdings, where apparently he does absolutely nothing except turn up to two meetings in uh, uh, twi meetings, you know, of the board of directors twice a year, which don't even happen in Ukraine itself. So that's that's the setup that we're talking about in Ukraine. And uh, look what Shokin is now describing. He says that the moment he stepped out of line, he makes it perfectly clear that he was actually chosen for the job of attorney general of Ukraine by agreement between per, 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 Petro Poroshenko and Joe Biden. In other words, Joe Biden is in effect his boss. When nonetheless, he steps on Joe Biden's toes by investigating a company in which Joe Biden's son is a director, what does Biden do? He goes to the president of Ukraine, Petro Poroshenko, complains about it, and Poroshenko immediately arranges for Joe, Biden, for Joe Biden's instructions to be fulfilled and for Shokin to be sacked. Hmm. Now, if this isn't a corrupt arrangement, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's, it, it's so wrong at so many levels. It's, it, you know, Shokin talks about um, you know, Poroshenko and all these people being, and uh, Lutsenko, his successor, being a traitor to Ukraine. Well, Ukraine is clearly not an independent country in this scenario. It is a vassal state. It is, in effect, a province of the greater empire run from Washington, 
by its proconsul, who is Joe Biden, who is putting his people, his own people, in, in, in all the important positions. I mean, it's so awful. It, it, it's beyond belief. And it's, again, fascinating that all this information is dribbling out. We get this um, um, French documentary. We get this news from Ukraine itself about um, how um, you know there's now a criminal case in Ukraine against Joe Biden. And of course, our media, the media in the West doesn't touch it. Oh, it gets better, Alexander. It gets much better. Let me take you back to the Interfax uh, article, Interfax News. And the first uh, paragraph of that article says, Ukraine's State Bureau of Investigation has registered a criminal case opened into possible pressure put on Ukraine's former Prosecutor General Viktor Shokin by former U.S. Vice President Joe Biden. The State Bureau of Investigation has added information about a criminal offense committed to the Unified Register of Pretrial Investigations. Shokin's lawyer, Oleksandr Teleshetsky, said at a press conference at the Interfax Press Center in Kiev on Thursday. Now, I'm going down a bit towards the end of the article, and they're talking about the case. And the interesting part about it is that uh, Shokin's lawyer is saying it is also advisable to invite the U.S. to take part in the investigation, adding that he would forward the relevant requests to the prosecutor general's office. We'll definitely do this. This is one of the priorities in this criminal investigation because this case can't be investigated without leaving mechanisms of internet without, sorry, without involving mechanisms of international legal cooperation, Telechetsky said. Quote, judging by remarks Biden allowed himself to make in public, Viktor Mikolovich Shokin has sufficient grounds to believe that it was him, Biden, who masterminded and to a certain extent perpetrated those criminal offenses to which Shokin alerted the law enforcement agencies of Ukraine. He said, Greek law enforcement agencies in turn are investigating Shokin's mercury poisoning in 2019, Teleshetsky said, adding that Shokin himself links this incident to Biden. Alexander, I did some research on this in September 10th, 2019 in September, Shokin's brother had passed away and when Shokin buried his brother, he then took a holiday. He wanted to get away for a bit and he took it to Greece. He was, I believe, in the island of Kos. And this is a quote from Shokin. Quote, this happened on September 10, 2019. It was in Greece where I was on a private trip. It was a vacation. Unfortunately, my brother died and we buried him. After this, you know, no one would really like to have a vacation, but I did want to spend some time on my own. I have very good friends in Greece. I went over to visit them. And on September 10, when I got out of the car, I lost consciousness and fell on the ground. I don't quite remember what happened next, but those who were around later told me that I was very lucky that this happened in that place and at that time. It happened approximately 1140 and the hospital was nearby, as well as the ambulance and great professionals, Shokin said. According to the conclusion of the Greek clinic where I was first admitted at intensive care, I had two cardiac arrests. In order to revive me, defibrillators were used in intensive care. Then I spent eight days there before being transferred to the ward. I couldn't walk, so I had to learn to walk there again. Make a long story short, he later went back to Kiev. He was later uh, advised to go to Vienna and to seek further treatment. The findings indicated that he had suffered from mercury poisoning. Mercury content in his body was 9.7%, five times over the maximum limit. And so now the Greek authorities are investigating what appears to have been a poisoning in Greece of Shokin. Shokin is suggesting, and this is a quote from Shokin, there is a possibility of Biden's involvement. End quote. What do you make of everything I have just read you, Alexander, as to what's going on here? Well, the mind. And by the way, by the way, Alexander, just to add another footnote, 
Before you begin, he was actually treated by the same medical professional who treated Viktor Yushchenko. <laughs> interesting. It, it is interesting because, of course, in Viktor Yushchenko's case, this was the same. Uh, 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 this was the clinic in Vienna, I think, which uh, uh, um, you know made because Viktor Yushchenko was the former president of Ukraine who claimed that he had been poisoned by the Russians. Only this has now, I think, been largely uh, discredited. But you know. This is a serious clinic. This is the point to make here. Now, um, I don't know whether Joe Biden had any role in Shokin's attempted murder, if that's what it was. I would say a few things, though. Firstly, um, mercury is a well-known way of trying to poison people. Um, in China, for example, um, until well into the 20th century, it was it was the most common way. People used to use mercury poisoning as a mechanism there for getting rid of their uh, uh, opponents. It was a common way of poisoning people. So mercury poisoning is not by any means unprecedented or unusual. Secondly, one has to say this, a person like Sharkin is likely to have lots of enemies, including lots of enemies in Ukraine itself. And it's quite possible that uh, one of those people was involved and it might not have had anything to do with the Bidens. I'm, I have to make that point because, of course, we don't know. And, you know, what one mustn't jump to conclusions or make any assumptions. But there is one thing about this case, this this incident that really does stand out for me. And that's the date. I think I think I'm right in saying that you mentioned that it's the it's early September. 2019. September we, 10, September, September 10, 10, 2019 is the exact date. Indeed. What is going on in the United States at that time? Well, this is exactly the time when the whistleblower, the famous whistleblower, remember him, and all of that is reporting things to, uh, 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 you know, the various agencies in the United States and when the, the, the Democrats are discussing launching the impeachment proceedings. It is right at the beginning of Ukraine Gate. It's the time when Ukraine Gate, in other words, is, is, is boiling up uh, 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 and about to burst. And into the middle of all of this, at the same moment in time, surprise, surprise, shocking, the person at the center of the whole story, because let's be very clear, shocking is the key, he's the critical witness Shocking, somebody, it seems, trying to poison him. Coincidence? I mean, you know, it's surprising if it is a coincidence. That's all I can say. A very surprising, very strange coincidence. Timing would be really, very remarkable, given that presumably it would have been possible to poison Shokin at any time. And why? if it's not connected to Ukraine gate, is somebody trying to poison shock in at that specific moment in time? Okay, so let's uh, wrap it all up, Alexander. Let's just give a summary of what's going on. From what, from what I understand, and correct me if I'm wrong, an investigation is being opened in Ukraine at the moment. Most likely they're gonna need the US's assistance, correct? Absolutely. That, and that's, that's what Shokin's that, lawyer is saying. And that is an important point because, of course, one of the one of the criticisms that was made by the Democrats during the Ukraine Gate affair was that um, uh, Donald Trump was acting by, you know, on his own initiative, trying to get the Ukrainians to start some kind of investigation that would throw dirt on Biden, and that this was all done as a kind of, um, you know, through the back channels without involving the Justice Department. In fact. As we see, the intention is very much to involve the U.S. Justice Department. So it looks as if the Justice Department will be involved in this in, in this investigation. Uh, and that, I think, is an important point, very important point. All right. And uh, the main focus of this investigation, no surprise, is Joe Biden. Correct. Absolutely. Uh, uh, in other words, exactly what Zelensky and Trump was supposed to have discussed in that telephone conversation, though, of course, they didn't. And I've always made this point. Uh, um, surprise to surprise, it's now actually happening. And it's happening, as I said, not because Donald Trump has arranged it, 
but because Viktor Shokin, who is himself Ukrainian, has insisted on it. Yeah, because the mainstream media and much of the U.S. government may have not taken Biden's words during that event, which we've now seen that video seriously, but, and I will quote uh, the lawyer in this case, Shokin's lawyer, quote, judging by remarks Biden allowed himself to make in public. Exactly, exactly. And there is, of course, another thing which would, of course, explain why Viktor Shokin is acting now, and that is this apparent murder attempt. He may very well feel that since somebody has been trying to kill him in order to silence him, his best protection is to get the criminal investigation going. Alexander, to wrap it up, Shokin's words, not mine, not yours, quote, there is a possibility of Biden's involvement, end quote. Here's another quote from Shokin. I have no obvious enemies of whom I'm positively aware that they are my enemies. Of course, one of the versions, although this version requires probing, is that there's a possibility of Joe Biden's involvement in all of this in some way. I officially contacted the Greek law enforcement on this matter. They have my official statement as I asked them to investigate. Now we know that the Greek authorities are investigating and at this very moment, as we are doing this video, you have made a connection to the timing. First time I've heard it as well, that September 10 date. Exactly. I mean, as I said, it seems if it is coincidence, which by the way, uh, well, if it is coincidence, it is a remarkable coincidence. But somebody should try and poison Shokin at exactly that moment in time when his evidence is most important and when people are most interested in hearing what he has to say. I, I, as I said, I'm not saying I don't know that any, I'm not pointing any specific fingers at anyone. But like you, I do point out that Shokin himself suspect, appears to suspect that Biden was involved in some way. Everything we've said during this video, Alexander, are quotes from Shokin. Correct. And Who from Interfax and from RT. And those quotes about Biden are from Shokin himself, quotes. Absolutely. Who was, of course, I mean, what, for what it's worth, the former chief law enforcement officer of Ukraine. America's friend and ally. All right, we will wrap it up there. <laughs> I think I think we covered quite a lot. All right, Alexander Rikuris, editor in chief of the Durad. Guys, hit that like button, share the channel with everybody you know. It really helps out a lot. And also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and go to the Durad shop and pick up some merchandise. We have great merch, awesome polos, awesome magic mugs. Also, don't forget to donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe star as well. Alexander, you have a magic mug right there. Indeed, I do. I have my one of my magic mugs, which is the one with the badge of the Russian Federation. It seems to be my default one at the moment because my wife has been uh, 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 appropriating for her own purposes all the others. But they're all in perfect and wonderful condition because magic mugs like this are so strong, so durable, so elegant, so perfect in every way that they can seem to absorb an enormous amount of use. And uh, we've had, I've had this mug for over a, year, over a year now, and you will see that it's in perfect condition. It looks exactly as it did when it was new. And this is true, by the way, of all of my other magic mugs also. And I've got several and I drink from them all the time, as does my wife. And they end up uh, being washed and moved around and, you know, used by other people, by our visitors. And yet they're all as good as new. They're all strong. They're all elegant. There are no, no chips, no cracks, no discoloration. They are all looking fantastic. And this one has the badge of the Russian Federation, which, as I pointed out on several occasions, you will find on Vladimir Putin's mugs and cups and saucers and uh, plates and bowls and all those things from which he eats and drinks in the Kremlin. It's different, by the way, from the double-headed eagle of the Durand, which you will see on this fantastic polo shirt, 100% uh, cotton, incredibly elegant and stylish, incredibly uh, comfortable to wear, beautifully made, 
also exceptionally durable, always, by the way, a sign of quality. I've been having, I've had this shirt now for around a year, and it is literally as good as new. As, by the way, are all my other Durand shirts. We've had, uh, I have, you know, we have long sleeve t-shirts, short sleeve t-shirts. Um, I have examples of both of those. And they too are in perfect condition. You can't say that of most t-shirts in my experience, that they would survive in perfect condition, heavy use for so long. It's very much a sign of quality. And you don't just find mugs and t-shirts and polo shirts on our shop. You find other amazing things. You will find v-neck shirts. You will find hats, hoodies and stickers. You will find our amazingly interesting electronic books in which we discuss subjects like Ukraine Gate and Russia Gate and Epstein and Brexit and all that and you'll find it all on our shop and you will also if you buy these great things not just be the proud owner of them but you'll be supporting the Duran too so don't hold back support the Duran be the proud owner of these great things come to our shop Alex will tell you how You'll find the link for the shop in the description box down below, thedurantshop.com. Alexander Mercurius, editor-in-chief of Durant. Thank you. Until next time, everybody, take care.